Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And as the holiday season approaches, I would like to show you how to create this effect of snow gently falling on text. So, very pretty effect, not at all difficult to do. So let's take a look. So the first thing I want to do is to make some text. Now, of course, you could do this using the 3D text tool in Fusion, but of course the UV mapping is horrible and I want some nice UV mapping. So I'm actually going to bring in a model that I've made in Blender that has been correctly UV mapped. So import a limbic scene. I will give you a link to this. Open that up, UV map text, and I'm going to delete those two camera instances there. So this is my text. And then I want to bring in a texture. As I say, you can do this using the 3D text tool, give it some extrusion, a bit of a bevel and whatever. So to texture our text, let's add a, a replace materials node after the text. And then let's add a blin to our text texture and take the blin output into the material input of the replaced material. So I'm just going to add a brightness contrast after that because I really want to reduce the contrast a lot on this like that. And then I'm going to add a bump map node. I'm going to take my texture into the bump map, take the bump map out into the blin's bump map material input and maybe just increase that height scale to two. We won't see anything yet because we haven't got any lighting. So 3D options, lighting. And I will add in a luma key here, take my texture into the luma key, take the luma key output into the specular intensity. And then we can just play with the luma key to get the specular detail that we want. So we obviously don't want the indentations to be shiny. So that's why I'm crunching the blacks in a little bit like that. So anyway, that's that's our basic text. Let's actually just make an underlay for that. Keep it all tidy. So then the next thing I want to do is just build my environment. And I've got two extra image maps that I'm going to bring in. Here they are. And let's remove that merge. We don't need that. So the first one is this rocks looks like that. And the second one is the background. It looks like that. So let's take the snowy background. Let's add a 3D shape and let's set the size to 12. Now my image is 1920 by 1080. So if I come over to the transform and we unlock the scale and we set the X to 1.92 and the Y to 1.08, that'll be mapped correctly onto our 3D shape like that. And we can drop that into our merge here. So what we're going to do is we are going to take this 3D shape and just move it back on Z to negative 22, I think, something like that. Let's add a 3D camera while we're at it. 3D camera. Let's set the Z position to five, I think. Let's add a 3D renderer after that so we can see the result. And there's our 3D rendered result. We want to switch to hardware, I think, and we want to turn on lighting. We want to set this transparency to quick sort, and we're not seeing anything because we haven't got any lighting in our scene. So let's add a directional light. So I don't want my shape to be illuminated. So let's come to the material for the shape and turn off lighting and shadows. So this is this background. I want I only want the lighting on the text. So let's come to the transform for the lighting. Let's set that Y rotation to be 45. So it's coming in from the side. Let's duplicate that light. Command C, Command V, add it to the merge. Let's come to the transform and let's set this to something like negative 60. So it's filling in from the other side and maybe just reduce that intensity down to something like 0.5. This original one, let's maybe actually reduce that intensity down to 0.75. But actually, let's just keyframe it. So let's have an overall duration of 480 frames. Make sure we're at the first frame. So with this first directional light, Let's keyframe that intensity there at 7.75 and come forward to the end and set it up to one. And so as the snow is falling, it's going to brighten up the text, which is kind of what would probably happen in the real world. So let's now add in our rocks. So select the rocks, add a 3D shape. Let's set the size of the rocks shape to three and let's add it to our merge over here again we want to turn off the lighting so come over to the material turn off 
shadows and lighting, lighting and shadows. Let's just move this back a little bit on Z. So we've got some parallax with our text. So negative one on Z, I think. We also need to scale it. So let's come into the transform, unlock the scale. Again, let's set the X to 1.92 and the Y to 1.08, just to match the scale of the image map that we're feeding it, which is 1920, 1080. And then we can probably just move this up just a little bit like that. Let's have a look at how we're doing. And maybe our camera can come down a little bit. Just move that down so we're centered up. And you see the nice parallax we're getting with the background. So let's just switch to single viewer mode. Just going to drop in a quick underlay here. Tidy that up. That's our background in there. So now we've got everything pretty much set up and we can think about our particles. So the first thing I want to do is add a particle emitter. Then I'm going to add a P custom node. Now don't be scared, this is going to be very, very easy to set up, but it's going to create this magical effect of the snow landing on the text. So then we want to add a particle render node. Let's turn on kill particles that leave view because we are actually going to have a lot of particles and we, we don't want those to be overloading the system. And we can take our particle render out into our 3D merge over here. So then let's set up our particle emitter. Let's first of all set up the region. Click on the region tab. Let's choose cube as the region type. Let's set the width to 3.5. 0 0.01 is fine for the height, but let's set the depth to 1.2. And let's set the Y offset to, I think, 1.2. So it's clearing the top of the frame. Next, let's come over to the style and set the style type to blob. And let's set the size to 0 0.05, size variance to 0 0.05. Let's come over to the controls. So first of all, let's set up our lifespan to be 480. So we've got them lasting at least as long as the scene itself. So what I want to do with this number is I want to keyframe it. So I'm going to come to the first frame and I'm going to hit a keyframe, set that number down to zero. Come forward to, I think, 240, set this number to 40. Come forward to 250, set it back down to zero. So what we're going to do is get this sort of flurry of snow that's going to cover the text and then it's going to die down again. So lots still to set up, I'm afraid. So let's set up the velocity. So if that's not open, open it up. So for the velocity, we want 0.1 and 0.1 for the variance. Let's come to the angle, set that to negative 85, have angle variance of 30, angle Z 90, angle variance 30. So now if we run that, you'll see we're getting the snow falling, looks quite pretty. And we'll have to try and keep chatting till we can see the snow starting to stop like that. What I haven't done is I haven't set up the number variance. So let's set that up. If we have a number variance of four, what will happen is you can probably see is that we're getting sort of snowflakes still dropping after the main flurry has ended. And that's going to be quite pretty. So now we need to set up the routine that's going to make the snow stick to the text. So let's come to RP custom. So let's make ourselves a bit of space here, because the first thing we want to look at is the region. And we want to have when entering region as the region mode. And for the region, we want mesh. And what we want to do is we want to come to our text, so our text object here, and we want to add it to the pcustom mesh input. So then let's come back to our pcustom. Let's come to particle. And basically what we want to say is as soon as it hits the text, kill the velocity. So we've got a velocity x, y, and z. So all we have to do is enter zero for those. And then as soon as they hit the text, they will stop moving. So let's have a look if that theory is correct. So they're falling, falling, falling. And you can probably see now that they're landing on the various surfaces of the text, mainly on the top like that. And we're getting this nice build up. The longer you run the simulation, obviously, the more coverage of snow you're going to get on the text. So just a couple of final details I'd like to look at. If you will remember, we brightened up our text as the scene went on. And I'd like to do the same thing with my rock layer. I'm just going to disable that particle render while I set this up as well. So what I'm going to do is add in just there, after the rocks texture, a brightness contrast. I'm going to come to the first frame 
I'm going to keyframe the gain. I'm going to come forward to the end and then just brighten that up just a bit, 1.2 maybe. And you can see that now it looks as though fresh snow has fallen on there and we're getting that sort of brightness that you get once fresh snow has fallen. And I think that will help. And the only other thing we could do is to just animate our camera. So let's just come to the first frame again. Let's maybe set this Z position to six and then keyframe that, come forward to the end, set it to, I think, five. And then we're going to get that. And what's nice is we're sort of starting to see the parallax effect of those distant mountains. And that's probably going to be quite nice. And so overall, the scene is going to look like this. So I hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.